I think we can all agree Escanor is one of anime's greatest and most disrespectful characters to ever do it. I mean, this man exudes confidence, and today's video will ask the question, what would happen if a wimpy kid with no quirk was bestowed with a power the likes of sunshine? Enjoy. Wait, 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 wait. By the way, I almost forgot to edit this in there. Uh, today's video is actually going to be based on a fan fiction created by Real Mateo. You can find his links down below in the description. Anyways, enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. When Izuku turned four years old, he learned that not everybody was equal. He went to the doctor and he told them he had an extra joint that he would never develop a quirk. At this point, Izuku started crying. His world was crumbling. When Izuku got home, he started watching one of his favorite videos of All Might as he would feel tears begin to fall down his face. His mom would walk in as Izuku would say, M Mom, can, can I become a hero too? She would say, I'm, I'm so sorry, Izuku. And she would go in for a hug. We then go into a 10 year time skip with Izuku running away from his childhood bully and Bakugo who had bullied him for years, learning that, you know, he was quirkless. Izuku finally ended up running away and went into an alleyway where he would see an old man. The old man started to speak. Who are you? Izuku would say, uh, uh, I'm Izuku Midori and, and you? He would answer. The old man would say, My name is Eskinor. Why did you come here? Izuku started to explain his situation over his bullying and the fact that he's quirkless. Eskinor would simply sit down as he would listen to Izuku. As he would done, he finally started to speak. So even though you're quirkless and you've been bullied for years, you still want to become a hero. And not just any hero, but the top hero. How prideful. Izuku would nod as he would look at Eskinor who now stood up and started to speak again. I think I can help you. My quirk is pride, and it's a mixture of five quirks, and one of those quirks is to transfer my power to anyone I please, he said with a big smile on him. Izuku just looked at him like he just made a joke, and then he asked why he would ever give someone like him a quirk. Eskinor would then answer, I've lived for way too long. I have AHD. A curse that lets me live longer. But in my time, I was a powerful man. However, my time will soon be over. So I don't have much use for it. You can have it. Izuku began to cry. He didn't think he would ever get a quirk. But now, now, he had a chance to get a quirk and to be a hero. He looked at Eskinor and said that he would like to have his quirk. Eskinor smiled at Izuku and started to transfer his power to him. Izuku felt pain like he had never felt before. He cried and couldn't even stand up. When it was all over, he stood up and didn't see Eskinor anywhere. So he started to walk home. He was sure he got a quirk because he felt like he had power like never before. When he was home, he ate Katsudan with his mom and went straight to bed. He didn't want to talk to mom about power because she would start to panic and ask him if he was hurt. And he didn't want to worry her. He wanted her to enjoy the day. And so he just went to sleep to start the next day. Izuku's quirk will consist of five things. Sunshine. When the sun comes up, Izuku becomes strong and prideful. And the higher the, stand, the sun stands, the higher he becomes, meaning that at noon is when Izuku is at his most powerful state. Second, sun create. Izuku can create suns and control the size of them. Heat nullification. Izuku is completely immune against any kind of heat and fire. Heat radiator. Izuku's body creates heat and he can even transfer it into other things as raw power. And lastly, quirk transfer, meaning that he now has the ability to pass his quirk onto somebody else. That said, seeing as Izuku went to his room, obviously the man ended up passing out. And when Izuku woke up the next day, he woke up to only see a strange note as well as glasses on his face. He was going to take them off, but then he read the note that said, the glasses you're wearing, they're supposed to suppress your prideful form. 
And yes, by the way, Eskinor was wearing the same glasses. Izuku saw the note and thought it was weird. He then took off his glasses only to find out that he was starting to grow and gaining a ton of muscles. He put on his glasses again and started to shrink. Then his mom called him for breakfast. This is when he would begin thinking, what am I going to tell mom about my glasses? He would think about that as he goes downstairs as fast as he can. And his mom would say, Izuku, today we're going to eat pork miso soup for breakfast. She looked at him for a couple of seconds and then spoke. Why are you wearing glasses? Is it a new trend or something? Izuku would say, yeah, yeah, mom, that, that's right. As he looks rather nervous. From here, Inko nods and they begin eating. With 30 minutes later, Izuku being like, all right, mom, got a dip. From here, he would decide to arrive at school. And as soon as he does, everybody would look at him. Maybe, maybe it's because of my glasses. I went to my desk and then Kachan came in. He was also looking weird at me. Then he spoke. Hey, Deku, what's with the glasses? I just stayed silent, hoping he would leave, but he never did. We switched to Bakugo's point of view. Why the hell is that stupid Deku wearing glasses now? I remember I hit him with a rather powerful blast in the face two days ago, but he had taken worse. I don't see the problem. I tried to talk to him for a while, but he didn't speak to me. I started to get really angry and blasted him with an attack, and his glasses went flying. I said, don't you dare look down at me, Deku. He then speaks to me, but that is exactly what I'm doing because... That's what you do to the weaker. I just looked at him. I was confused. He had never talked back to me. What did you say? I said trying to scare him. You heard what I said. I'm above everyone on this planet, Deku would say. With Bakugo thinking, did I just hear that right? Above everyone? What the hell? Then it struck me. He was really tall and muscular. His shirt was destroyed, revealing muscles the same size as All Might. And he really was looking down at me. Damn you, Deku! You're still the weak compared to me. I screamed and jumped up at him, and he used the biggest explosion I could, only to see nothing. He was unfazed, not a scratch on him. I took a step back now, scared. My legs were shaking for the first time in years. I looked at him again, only to see that he was now ignoring me, just walking to the glasses and putting them on as he would shrink down to his normal self. The teacher came in and told us about our futures, but I just stayed quiet. Everyone looked at me. They were probably thinking, why didn't I say anything? But then I heard Deku was going to UA with me. But I just stayed silent. And now, now everybody looked at me. I was worried I couldn't say anything. He was stronger than me. And I was afraid. I was afraid of his pride. Quick side tangent. I know a lot of you guys are not used to me speaking that way. And by the way, every time when I was talking there, it was in Bakugo's perspective. But every time that you heard somebody like being prideful, that was Izuku in case I may have caused some confusion. What basically happened was Bakugo was trying to like kind of minimize like Izuku telling him he's nothing. He blasted the glasses off of him. Then Izuku got prideful, scared Bakugo. And then Bakugo kind of just stayed silent because he pretty much got bitched. That said, now we switch to pretty much nobody's point of view. Izuku at this point went home and he took another path so that Bakugo couldn't fight him. When he came to a bridge, he heard someone speak. You will make the perfect skin suit, kid, said a slime looking man. And before he knew it, he was stuck in him, struggling to breathe. Everything went dark when he heard, don't worry. Why? Because I am here. Now we switch to all my perspective. I hit the villain in pretty much nearly nearby. I, I put the villain in a nearby bottle. Then I tried to slap the young boy lightly to make him wake up, but I accidentally put a little force behind it and he was sent flying to the wall of the bridge. His glasses was flying to a different location, so I went to the glasses to pick them up. Then I saw him come back. The young boy was nowhere to be seen. There was just a big bulky shirtless man standing there. Where's the boy? Are you a villain? I said, breaking my smile. To even think that I am a villain is the biggest sin you can commit, he said, never breaking the smile he had. I looked at him and saw some things that resembled the young boy first. The hair, the eyes, and third, the same pants. I asked him for his name and age, and he answered rather quickly with age 14, and my name is Izuku Midori. Don't you forget it. He took the glasses from me so fast I couldn't even see him. He put them on and he shrank back down to the boy I saw before. He looked up to me and started to fanboy and asked for an autograph. He was like an entirely different person than he was before. I walked away and jumped a bit. I looked down on my pants to see if the villain in the bottle was still there and it was gone. 
I landed on the rooftop and my time limit was up. I had turned back to my true form. And from here, I looked down to the ground only to see the young man with spiky hair kicking the bottle so the villain must have released it. Ah, damn it. That's what must have happened. I already passed my time limit. I, what do I do? Ugh, I guess it's up to the other heroes now. But one hero didn't do anything. They just stood there, trying to find an opening. I was about to jump down and help even though my timeline was over when I saw the young boy I saved earlier walk to the villain calmly and that's when I saw it. He didn't have his glasses on him. They were hanging in one of the sides of his pockets. He started to grow and become bulkier. Hey villain, how dare you even touch a hair on my friend's body. Know your place. From here, he called upon his sacred treasure. Divine Axe Rita, he yelled. Then a flying axe came to him. He, shopped the, he stopped the slime villain in two, but it didn't regenerate. The slime was burning. He had burnt a liquid. The villain screamed in pain and it later gave up. The young boy put the villain in a new bottle and walked away to what seemed the police station pretty much, to what seemed to him pretty much ignoring the police and ignoring the scoldings of other heroes. When the young boy had given the bottle to the police, he went home. I wanted to talk to him. When I caught up with him, I looked at him and asked if his legs moved on his own. He said, no. He said that he only wanted to save him because he wanted to become a hero. That's what I wanted to hear. I may have found a new successor, I thought, as I went into my true form. Izuku, I want to give you my power. I said and started to explain my quirk. I was expecting a yes, but he said no. I am already way more powerful than you. I don't need it, he said smiling as always. I looked at him confused but didn't pry too much into it and instead asked him for one thing and that was a fight. I said if I won he would take the quirk even if I didn't even if he didn't want it and if he won I would recommend him into the school. He accepted the terms and we went to a fighting spot way up in the mountain so that nobody would be hurt. We started to fight. Well I started to fight. He just stood there completely unfazed by my attacks. Is that all you got? He said almost sounding annoyed coming from Zuka by the way I charged up from 10 to 50 but he was still unfazed I decided to go all the way to 100% out on him but he just stood there taking all of the attacks head on not even flinching then he said come on attack with all you've got this isn't even scratching me at this point in time all I could do was attack with my most powerful attack I screamed at the top of my lungs United States of Smash he took it head on and I thought he must have been beaten by now, but when the dust cleared, he simply sat there with a smile. You know, <laughs> that actually tickled a bit, he said, laughing. I couldn't believe it. He he took my most powerful attack and, and it tickled. I gave up and walked away and went to Yue to hand over a recommendation to Nezu. Nezu looked confused for the first time in his life, but accepted it. I walked home and thought, I can't wait to see you at school, Izuka Midoriya. Now, we're going to be changing to, yet again, nobody's point of view. By this point, it had now been 11 months since Izuku's fights with All Might, and now, Izuku stands before the big gate of UA. He was very nervous. When he stepped into the classroom, he was greeted with a fight between a blue-haired boy and Kachan. It had to do with feet and deaths or something. Later, he heard a verge from behind him. Why aren't you sitting down? He sounded kind of tired, so Izuku turned to see a zombie stuffed into a sleeping bag. Put on your gym clothes and meet me outside, he said while rolling away. When they came outside, as I was waiting there with the ball in his hand. Katsuki, come here and throw the ball. Katsuki went to Aizawa and took the ball, and he used one of his quirks to throw the ball while screaming, DIE! DIE? Everyone would think at the same time. Aizawa held up some sort of phone and it showed 705.2 meters. This looks like fun, Ashido said, wearing a big smile. Fun? Fun, you say? Fine. Then the last placer will be expelled, Aizawa said with a somewhat angry look. Izuku walked to Aizawa, giving him his glasses and started to grow. The rest of the exercises were simple. A 50 meter run that Izuku cleared in an instant, almost looking like he teleported. A grip test, which he broke. And last, it was his turn to throw the ball. But Izuku saw Aizawa's eyes glowing red. Give the others a chance at least, he said, but Izuku ignored him and threw the ball. Aizawa looked at his phone thingy 
and it showed infinity. Everyone was panicking. Even Isaiah was having a hard time with this. How? How the hell? But I erased your quirk. You think that you can erase my quirk? Don't make me laugh. If you could erase my quirk, it would be the same as erasing the sun itself. Izuku said while staring at Aizawa. Izuku took his glasses and put them on so that he could go back to being small again. He looked at the top five on this on he looked at the top five on this exercise, which was Izuku Midoriya, Shoto Toroloki, Momo Yairozu, Kaski Bakugo, and Fumikagi Tokiyami. Izuku was interested in the third placer, so he looked over to her and he saw a beauty that that he couldn't even comprehend. That day, Izuku swore on his pride that he would protect her from anything that he could possibly harm her. From now, we're going to be having a small time skip. It was now time for All Might's class. I am here, walking through the door like a normal person. Everyone at this point began screaming and fanboying, with All Might telling everybody to go outside and change into the hero costumes. Everyone walked out and met All Might. Then Izuku came out wearing golden armor like the one that Eskino wears. Well, 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 I was thinking he would do... 2v2 matches, but since my recommended students is here, we're going to go 19 versus 1. Everybody looked at Izuku and then started to freak out. N 19 versus 1? Don't you think that's a little bit overkill? said a red haired boy. That man can take me out with no problem, young Ajiro said All Might. Ajiro stopped talking and started to head into the building with the other 18 classmates. Time skip because I'm too lazy to write this part. Izuku at this part is standing over 18 classmates, with the only one left being Momo, who at this point had given up. Izuku didn't want to hurt her because he had sworn on his pride not to let anything hurt her, and he was totally in love with her at this point. So that ended the first day for Izuku and Yue. Fun fact, I'm weakening Izuku's forged pride form so that when he is in that form, he's just as strong as All Might. I'm not that good with writing romance, but I'll try my best. That said, from here we're going to be switching over to Fumikage's point of view. I was walking dark. I was walking in a dark night when I stumbled into a dark alleyway. He saw a tall, drunk man with the gray hair, a big, <gasps> excuse me, a big scar, and some red clothes. Hike, Birdie, what are, hey, what are you doing here? Oh wait, sorry, <clears throat> you're a crow. The man said. I nodded and asked if you needed help to get home. No, I'm fine, Crowy. My name is Bon. My blood is running dry. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Wait, you're a crow? You're supposed to steal things, Bon said. N no, I'm actually... Is all I could say before I got cut off. Crows steal things. So you're perfect for my power. Bon said, slowly walking towards me. As I have said, I'm not ste... Is all I could say before Bon was in front of me. And he placed his hand on my shoulder. Here you go. Now you have my powers. Go steal or something, he said with a big grin. Fumikage felt great power and energy go through him. And when he looked over to Bon, he was gone. Not a trace of him. What did, he, what did he notice? What he did notice was a tattoo of a fox on his side of his stomach that, growed, that grew dark when the shadow came out. The hell? I have a fox tattoo? The dark shadow screamed at Fumikage as he noticed that dark shadow had the same tattoo. Fumikage was tired and went home. This day had been too long. By the way, now, Dark Shadow's power has changed. He now has the ability of Hunter, where he can steal strength and speed from anyone. Snatch. He can drag anything towards him. He also has Immortality, since he can't die anymore. Mega Regeneration, seeing as all his wounds will now heal in seconds. Quirk Transfer. And now, he's able to actually transfer his quirk to somebody else as well. Now... We're going to be switching back to Fumikage's perspective one more time. I walk to school, still thinking about yesterday's events, and it seems like I am mortal. When I walked home yesterday, some random guy stabbed me 67 times in the chest, and now all the holes are gone. When I got into the room, Izuku sat there at his desk reading a book. I kind of wanted to go talking to him, but President Mike came in and we started English. It was boring. Azawa came into the classroom and was looking tired as usual and told us that we were all were going to have to do a lesson where we would have to clo choose class reps. Tenny Ine wanted us to vote who was going to become class rep, but it was obvious that he wanted us to vote him. It all ended with the results. 
Izuku, nine votes. Momo, three votes. Tenya, two votes. So it was decided that Izuku would be class rep and Momo, vice rep. When it was time for lunch, an alarm went off. Everybody panicked and ran out. I even ran. But at the door stood Izuku without his glasses, not letting anyone out. Then he said, why are you running? You were all students of UA. If you have even a little pride, then don't run. Everyone looked outside and saw that it was only the press. We're now going to switch back to All Might's point of view. I was walking to 1A to transfer Izuku to 3A. When I got there, I asked Izuku if he wanted to transfer. He gave me a condition. He wanted to challenge everyone from 1A on a 1v1 match, that he needed to win all of them in 5 seconds. I accepted the condition and told all of the other students. The fight between 1 through 18 was easy for him and the only one left was Fumikage. He walked up to Izuku. Izuku punched him right on his stomach, but Dark Shadow stopped the attack and said, Hunter Fist! This is when Dark Shadow would begin to grow and become bulkier, and Izuku seemed to shake, not of fear, but because he became weaker. Cruel son, Izuku said, and a son came. Izuku threw the sun at Fumikage's Dark Shadow, who couldn't handle the light and went back. I told Izuku to stop the attack, but... He didn't stop. The sun went clean through Fumikage, but the hole regenerated instantly. I, I couldn't believe it, but Fumikage gave up and walked away. I congratulated Izuku and told him that he could transfer to 3A, but Izuku said that he couldn't transfer because the match went on for longer than 5 seconds. This is when we're going to switch back to just the narrator, you know what I mean? Aizawa at this point would step into the classroom and tell everybody that tomorrow we're all going to be heading to the USJ. Everyone became hyper and they all went home and slept. Now, from here, we're gonna get into the UA, uh, USJ, sorry. Class 1A walked on board the bus with Fumikage looking around to see if there were any seats left. There was only one seat left and it was next to Izuku. He walked over to Izuku and sat down. It was quiet at first, but then they started to talk. Izuku was mostly asking about his quirk and why it made him have a curl face. Later in the conversation, Fumikage started to talk about the tattoo he got from some guy named Bon, and that Dark Shadow had the same tattoo. Weird, because I have a similar tattoo on my back, but it isn't a fox, it's a lion. Before Fumikage could talk anymore, Aizawa started to talk. We're here, now walk out slowly. The class obeyed and walked out of the bus, and there was the USJ. This is when they met the Pro Hero 13 as she began to explain about the USJ and her quirk how it could be used to kill just as easy as it could save people. And after an entire explanation, Denki would point to the middle of the USJ as he would say, Sweet! They have fake villains as well? Out of nowhere, Aizawa would come in and say, Those aren't fakes! Those are real villains! Everybody stand back! Like for part two!